Okay. I didn't expect that to just go live right now. <laughs> but we are. I was I think I'm just gonna leave it running, Dr. Jackson, if that's okay with you. It's fine with me. Uh Mr. Yildell, what about you? That works. Okay. Yeah. I, I clicked it and was ready to go. So if you are watching to the public, we are getting ready to stream. Uh, once Council Member White uh, is in and we'll go from there.
just as a note, the uh, council member will be coming over shortly, but when you're promoted from an attendee to a panelist, you will be able to turn on your video and we will be able to see and hear you for your testimony.
Good afternoon. Are you guys ready to go? You can give me a thumbs yes, up. Sir. All right, great. Uh, first, of all, before we get started, I want to apologize for jumping on here late. Um, just leaving another hearing uh, on the committee of the whole. Um, so we're trying to make it happen. Uh, so we can get started. Good afternoon. I'm Treyon White. Ward a council member chair on the committee on recreation, libraries, and youth affairs. Today is Thursday, October the 27th, 2022. Uh, we are using the Zoom platform and on YouTube. The time is now 12:20 p.m. Today we will be reviewing the following resolutions. PR 24-0960, the Commission on Board of Library Trustees, Leaf Dom Joe, confirmation resolution of 2022. PR 24-0952, Commission on African American Affairs, Dr. Denise Wright, Confirmation Resolution of 2022. PR 24-0953, Commission on African Affairs, Jacqueline Stallworth, Confirmation Resolution of 2022. PR 24-0954, Commission on African American Affairs, Kristen Shimokia. Shimodiak, confirmation resolution of 2022. Forgive me for mispronouncing your name. Please correct me. Um, that'd be beneficial to me. PR 24-0955, which is the Commissioner on African American Affairs, Dr. Kimberly Jeffries Leonard, confirmation resolution of 2022. PR 24-09. Five, seven, Commissioner of African Affairs, African American, PR 24 dash 09, Confirmation Resolution 2022, PR 24 dash 0959, Commissioner of African American Affairs, Yolanda Young, Confirmation Resolution 2022. Today we have Commission on Board of Library Trustees and the Commission on African American Affairs. The Board of Library Trustees was established to set policy for the District of Columbia Public Libraries and its 26 locations. The board is comprised of nine unpaid district residents from wards around the city. The mayor appoints board members. They are confirmed by the city council for a maximum of two five-year terms. The Commission on African American Affairs was established in 2012, and since 2018, he has worked with the Mayor's Office on African American Affairs to build its relationship with government agencies, community-based organizations, stakeholders in our community, and local businesses to ensure African Americans have access to resources to stay and thrive in the district. Um, seeing no other council members present, all right. As I call the first panel of witnesses, they will be promoted to the audience to be panelists. Um, I don't think we have any public witnesses today. Um, so we go straight to our government witnesses. We have uh, Leif Domjo, Kristen, oh God, forgive me, Shimoniak, Dr. Denise Wright, Jacqueline Stallworth, Dr. Kimberly, Jeffries Leonard, Philip Pennell, Rashida Taylor, and Yolanda Young. Oh, Kristen, I never knew that was your last name. As I always say, shy. There it is. And we have some general questions in which we ask all uh, board members and we'll go straight to those. Um, we're gonna ask everyone while you're on screen, if you can cut your screen on and start by raising your right hand. It is the practice of this committee to swear in and affirm government witnesses. If you start by raising your right hand. Do you swear or affirm 
under the penalty, penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth and nothing but the truth. You can unmute by saying yes or I. Uh, yes. And, and yes. watching those minutes yes. to make sure. Yes, we are. No, I'm just joking. Yes. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Um, we will start with Miss. I'm sorry. We'll start with you, Mr. Leaf Domjo. Are you a district resident? Confirmed, do you plan on residing in the district during the duration of your appointment? Yes. All right. Have you been or currently been a member of any other district government board or commission? Have I, am I currently? Or have you been? And if so, which ones? I was the, um, I was on the board of trustees for the District of Columbia Public Library before. Okay. Um, are you an attorney? No. Okay. So the other question don't matter. Do you or your immediate family members have any interest, financial or otherwise, that may directly or indirectly pose a conflict of interest with the performance of your duties? No, I don't think I, okay, there we go. Um, do you have any outstanding liabilities, taxes, fees, or other payments to the district, federal, state, or other local governments that are contested or uncontested? I do not. Okay. All right. Um, I'll go ahead. I, I believe you have a opening statement you'd like to read. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good after good afternoon, uh, Chairman White. Um, for the record, I am Leif Dorms Joe. I'm a resident of Ward Three, and a nominee for the D.C. Public Library Board of Trustees. I want to thank Mayor Bowser for nominating me once again to join the board, and providing me another opportunity to serve the citizens of the District of Columbia. As I mentioned earlier, I previously served on the DCPL board from 2018 to 2020 and chaired the facilities committee, which was responsible for the oversight of the Martin Luther King Jr. Central Library renovation project. I appreciate the opportunity to testify before the committee and hope I can convey my dedication to the mission of the public library. In my current role as Executive Vice President at Redgate Real Estate Advisors, I lead our mid-Atlantic mid practice and concentrate on providing strategic advisory and pro project management services to a range of public and private clients. Many of our clients are mission-driven institutions like the public library. Some of them include the University of Maryland, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Children's National Hospital. Prior to joining Redgate in 2021, I ran an infrastructure asset management business for a major international engineering firm with a focus on state and local municipal operations and maintenance programs. Before joining the private sector, I spent 16 years as a senior government executive, first for the city of Baltimore, then the state of Maryland, and more recently, the District of Columbia as the director of the District Department of Transportation. I'm particularly proud of my years at DDOT, especially opening the DC um, streetcar service and awarding the construction contract for the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge. Recently, I was very happy to see DDOT and the PAVE DC team win the annual CAFRITS Foundation Public Service Award for a program which we initiated during my tenure at DDOT. I've served on numerous boards and commissions, WMATA, the Union Station Redevelopment Corporation, and the Maryland Economic Development Corporation. And I understand the importance of engaged and responsible governance bodies. My academic background includes a bachelor's degree from Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut, and a master's in public policy from Harvard University, concentrating in transportation, housing, and urban development. While at Harvard, I was recognized as a Rappaport Public Policy Fellow, and I worked for the Boston Public Schools. I was also uh, a member of the Kennedy School Admissions Committee in 2005. 
While in public life, I've received a number of awards and honors, including the DC Building Industries Association Public Leader of the Year Award and the Arbor Foundation's Champion of Trees Award, which I shared with DOEE Director Tommy Wells. Library patronage is very important to our family. My two young sons are enrolled in the Books from Birth program and enjoy story time at the neighborhood libraries. My loan history is heavy. Uh, not my financial loan history, my book loan history is heavy uh, on books regarding um, racial justice, climate change, and urban politics. And at any given time, I'm reading three or four books. I'm prone to losing track of time in small DC used bookstores or our branch libraries. I regularly visit other large cities and their central libraries to compare notes on, so we can learn from them, including Seattle, Austin, Nashville, and, and New York. I don't think simply loving books um, is the sole criteria for serving on such an important uh, board. I feel I bring three unique qualities that will help sustain and accelerate the good work of the library system. First of all, the library system needs to continue to invest in its capital assets with an emphasis on community responsiveness and equity. As the engagement and data collection supporting the 10-year facilities master plan proved, the smallest library facilities with service gaps are located in the city's low-income communities. Council and mayoral partnership dating back to the Williams administration has certainly done a great deal to address the library's physical plant and service quality gaps, but there is much more that needs to be done. I have significant relevant experience that can be drawn upon to make the noble aspirations of our 10-year capital planning effort a reality. Second, I have led public and private organizations through periods of economic stress. Our frontline workers, librarians, archivists, specialists, maintenance staff, police officers, administrative professionals are exhausted. The pandemic has taken a toll on their energy and sense of appreciation. Now we have entered economic times that are especially trying for public sector employees with modest salaries and very demanding jobs. Should I be confirmed by the council for this board, I would focus on making sure management is attuned to the leave and compensation issues, training and professional development, employee feedback, workplace safety and security, and all the necessary steps to engage and support our dedicated public team members. Third, I bring the benefits of having worked closely with the council, district agencies, and ANCs. I have a firm grasp of the process and procedures, pitfalls of government bureaucracy, not only at the local level, but extending into the regional and federal context. Moreover, I have solid relationships with WMATA, the business improvement districts, utilities, law enforcement, and the advocacy community. If confirmed, I would leverage these relationships to guide the, professional, the professionals at the library to the right resources and experts and partners. Um, in sum, I think my skills are a great complement to the existing um, members, who many of which I have served with before and have the utmost respect for. And I'd be honored um, to have a chance to contribute more to this very important civic priority. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now we can have opening statements. Uh, bye. Let me get it right. Hold on a second. Kristen Shamoniak. Is that right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear me? Give me a. Oh, uh, You're frozen. All right, you can start with your opening statement and I ask questions after that. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, Council Member White, members of the Committee on Recreation. I'm Live frozen. Yes, I, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? 
<laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Want you? Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Start with your opening statement. Good afternoon, Councilmember White, members of the Committee on Recreation, Li Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs, and residents of the District of Columbia. My name is Kristen Shamoniak, and I thank you for the opportunity to testify today and extend special thanks to Mayor, Mayor Mariel Bowser for her consideration for reappointment on the Commission of African American Affairs. As one of the youngest commissioners on the Commission on African American Affairs, I feel that the service to my community is of the utmost importance. My community activism efforts include being the chair of the board and lead prevention ambassador for the Black Millennials for Flint, a national environmental justice and civil rights organization that gathers like-minded organizations together to collectively take action and advocate against the crisis of lead exposure, specifically in African-American and Latinx and indigenous communities. Additionally, I am the educational programming chair for the Darrell Rivas Foundation, where I've committed time to tackling childhood hunger by assisting families with tools to live a healthy lifestyle. While I'm a native of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, I'm passionate about the work I am a part of right here in the District of Columbia. I have served as the president and community service programs chair for the Thursday Network, which is the Washington DC and suburban Maryland chapter of the National Urban League Young Professionals. Being part of one of the most progressive service oriented organizations in the DC area has allowed me to have a greater impact within the District of Columbia. As a result, I have been awarded the Thursday Network's Legacy Award and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Women in Leadership Award. As an advocate for the disenfranchised and voiceless, I am empowered by my seat at the table and opportunity to continue to affect change. I look forward to empowering Black voices in our communities, and I hope to spearhead our advocacy efforts for youth through education and awareness. Having obtained a master's degree in special education with a specialization in autism, I moreover look to affect change and address how African-American students have improved access to quality and inclusive special education services made available by our District of Columbia's public school and public charter school systems. My educational advocacy is what leads me to my purpose and place on this commission. And I look forward to furthering the work to protect, advocate, and suggest new efforts to protect our African-American residents in the district. As a member of the Commission on African-American Affairs, I was involved in various accomplishments of the commission, including the community grant program, the financially fit series, and the mayor's maternal and infant health summit, to name a few. I have also been a consistent attendee and participant in all commission meetings and planning sessions, including our outreach to guests and community leaders. Thank you for thank you to the community committee for taking this time to consider my nomination, and I welcome any questions you may have. Thank you. Hold on one second, Kristen. The council member is logging back in because of uh, some of the technical difficulties he was having before. Check one, two. We hear you, council member. Great. Now, can you see me? Nope. Yep, we can see right. that. There we go. All right. So I start out with these questions for you, Ms. Shimoniak. Um, are you a DC resident? And if confirmed, do you plan on staying in the district during the duration of your appointment? Yes. All right. Have you been or are currently a member of any District of Columbia Board of Commissions? African American Affairs. Thank you. Um, are you an attorney? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, do you or, or any of your immediate family members have any interest, financial or otherwise, that may directly or indirectly post a conflict of interest with the performance of your duties? No. Do you have any outstanding li liabilities, taxes, fees, or other papers to the district, federal, state, or other local governments that are con contested or uncontested? No. All right. Thank you. And forgive me guys for my computer, 
my phone, my technology is acting crazy. Give me one second. All right, we hear opening testimony from Dr. Denise Wright. Hi. How you doing? Do you have, doc, Dr. Wright, you have an opening testimony? Yes, I do. Okay, go right ahead. Um, good afternoon, Chairman White and members of the Committee on Recreation Libraries and Youth Affairs. My name is Dr. Denise Wright, and I want to take a moment to thank Chairman Tram White, Senior, and members of the committee for holding this hearing and allowing me to testify. I'd also like to thank uh, um, and express my uh, gratitude to Mayor Muriel Bowser for nominating me as a member, uh, for considering me as a member to the Commission on, on African American Affairs. I'm a native of Cleveland, Ohio, from the city of Shaker Heights. During my adolescent years, my family and I would come to the district to visit family, which had been here since the late 1960s. It was then that I would develop a connection with the city and the people here. After finishing my studies in Michigan for my master's degree in psychology, I applied to attend Howard University. It seemed over uh, Howard University, I, as I had never attended an HBCU. Due to my socialization and familial history, it seemed only fitting to attend an HBCU for my terminal degree. Uh, since the mid 1980s, the district has been my home. Over the past 30 years, I've resided here. My experiences have been rich and varied due to my exposure to various cultures, institutions, and historical events. I have engaged with, my, uh, with uh, entities of district government due to being a property owner of several properties as well as, as well as working at several district agencies. I'm a trained educational and clinical psychologist. My areas of specialization are educational research, quantitative and qualitative, health disparities and perceptions of race and equity. After receiving my doctorate from Howard, I taught in a number of uh, schools, namely Howard and Allied Health Sciences, Pharmacy and Nursing uh, for over seven years. I've also served as a guest lecturer for uh, and Georgetown School of Medicine uh, to train students in pre-med, as well as places like the University of Costa Rica and University of Delaware. I've also presented internationally on the issue of HIV and AIDS, health disparities, and its correlation with race and gender. For three years, I taught abroad in Nigeria, at the American University of Nigeria as the Director of Counseling and Psychological Services. I provided training and seminars for students and staff and developed protocols for mental health. Um, in addition to publishing a few journal articles, I'm currently on the ed editorial advisory board uh, for a new journal on health informatics, as well as a board member with the Consortium for International Management and Policy Development. My academic experiences have afforded me the opportunity to work on various projects as a freelance writer. In 2019, I co-authored a book uh, called The Osiris Papers with Dr. Raymond Winbush, which serves as a sequel to the ISIS Papers, authored by the iconic writer and scholar, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. In addition, to, I'm a film photographer and produce imagery with black and white film that highlight international events and figures as well as documentation of iconic events, places, and people in the district. Currently, I'm self-employed and work as a consultant on various projects, as well as having a private practice. I have certification in mental health and integrated medicine, which addresses the need for a holistic approach to mitigate issues of anxiety, depression, and sleep deprivation. I recently received an Arts Fellowship Award from the DC Arts Commission and Humanities, as well as admissions to the DC Art Bank. I've received awards from C. Sosa as well as Noma Bid for my contributions to the community. Um, I was an ANC commissioner for three terms. Uh, my first time was in uh, 2000 and 2009 to 2012. And then I'm currently a commissioner uh, for 5 e 3 but I will be stepping down. 
Um, throughout my life, I've volunteered in different capacities to enrich my life experiences and inclusion on the Commission for African American Affairs will integrate my passion and background for the rich African American history and culture in the DMV, along with my lifelong studies. Um, there's always more to glean and incorporate and understand in the course of our ancestors and what they did to build and develop the District of Columbia. My extensive background in research and writing about African American history, as well as it relates to trauma, achievement, et cetera, is relevant to the goals and objectives of the board. Due to my years of living in the district and broad skill set, I intend to serve as a complement to the talents of the other board members. My exposure to different areas of the district can help to increase the visibility of the commission, as well as working with others to determine viable projects and funding. Um, I want to thank you for your consideration and I welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's jump right in. Are you a district resident? And yes. to confirm, do you plan on staying in the district during the duration of your appointment? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Have you been or currently been a member of any district government board or commission? No, I have not. Okay. Are you an attorney? No, I am not. Okay. Do you or your immediate family members have any interest, financial or otherwise, they might direct or indirectly pose a conflict of interest with the performance of your duties? No, it will not. Okay, do you have any outstanding liabilities, taxes, fees, or other payments to the district, federal, state, or local governments that are contested or uncontested, not including tickets? This is DC. Oh, thank you very much for clearing that up. Uh, no, I do not. Thank you. Um, all right, thank you. I appreciate that. We look forward to bringing your nomination to the full committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ms. Jacqueline Stallworth. All right. Hello, if everyone. You have just a minute, you can get started. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, Chairman White and members of the Committee on Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs. I want to thank you, Chairman White, for holding this hearing, and I want to thank Mayor Bowser for my nomination to the Commission on African American Affairs. My name is Jacqueline Stallworth, and I was raised as the last of nine girls in a small rural town in Alabama by parents who were community activists. My father worked tirelessly on a community projects such as getting our roads paved, getting the school buses to pick up the students in front of their homes and blocking the city from putting a waste management plant in a predominantly black neighborhood. My mother worked on projects such as establishing a Girl Scout troop and teaching parents to fill out college financial aid forms. As a graduate of Tuskegee University, I am following the examples set by my parents and the founder of Tuskegee University, Booker T. Washington, to be actively involved in my community. For the past 25 years, I have taught high school in English in Alabama, Michigan, Maryland, and Virginia, and I have been teaching with an equity mindset to make sure that school's curriculum reflect our society, highlighting the con contributions of African Americans. To reach a wider audience, I'm a consultant with the College Board, where I train teachers to teach with an equity lens that does not center whiteness. Outside of teaching and consulting, I have been involved in every community in which I have lived. I moved to the Fort DuPont Park community in Ward 7 last October. Since moving into this neighborhood, I have gotten to know many of my neighbors, which consist of people who have been in the neighborhood for generations and people like me who moved recently, who are proud to live in the neighborhood and the District of Columbia. I know that the Commission of African American Affairs builds relationships with government agencies, community-based organizations, and local businesses to assure African Americans have access to resources to stay and thrive in the district. It, all, it also works across all government agencies to bridge the equity gap. It connect, connects residents to economic opportunities and convenes community organizations that advance the health, wealth, and education outcomes of African Americans in our city. And it celebrates and supports the preservation, history, and legacy of African Americans in the district. I'm passionate about each component of this mission and look forward to being on the ground to listen to the people and have the committee to reach its goal. 
My passion, love, and understanding of African America's importance to the fiber of DC make me an eminently qualified to serve on the commission. If confirmed to serve on the commission, I will continue to support the programs that the commission is currently involved with, such as Ready for Work, the YMCA's youth and government programs, and the DC Strings Say Sauce Initiative. My vision for the board is for us to continuously look for ways to connect African Americans to the many programs the district has to offer and to come up with tools that assess if our efforts to reach the community are actually working. Upon being on the commission, I will listen and learn and hopefully spearhead initiatives where there is the greatest need and help to ensure that we communicate effectively with the African American community. There are several areas that have been working well for the board and I will continue the great work that is being done and look for ways to improve the communication with the African American community. Thank you for your consideration. I welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you. Um, so I'm right in. Uh, I'm just gonna ask both of them at the same time. Are you a district resident? And if so, do you plan on residing in the district during the duration of your appointment? Yep, till I die. All right. <laughs> have you been or currently uh, currently a member of any district of columbia government board or commission no okay are you an attorney no nope. all right do you or your immediate family members have any interests financial or otherwise they may directly or indirectly pose a conflict of interest with the performance of your duties no okay do you have any outstanding liabilities, taxes, fees, and other payments to the district, federal, state, or other local governments that are contested or uncontested? No. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Dr. Kimberly Jeffries, Jeffries Leonard. Good morning. Good afternoon. Yep, good afternoon. Shall I go ahead and start now? Yes, you can start with your open statement. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair White and members and staff of the Committee on Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs. I am Dr. Kimberly Jeffries Leonard, Commissioner on the Commission on African American Affairs and the current chair. I am a proud resident of Ward 4 and a proud former resident of Ward 5. I am honored to have been nominated by Mayor Muriel Bowser to continue to serve on this critical commission. I welcome the opportunity to discuss my background and experience and the important work of the Commission on African American Affairs in the District of Columbia. I wanna thank you, Chair, for holding this hearing and I wanna thank Mayor Bowser again for this uh, appointment. I am President and CEO of, of Envision Consulting, LLC, a public health consulting firm specializing in strategic and innovative executive level solutions for public, private, and government entities. These include strategic planning, program design and implementation, program systems and assessment and evaluation, and minority community engagement. My professional work reflects my efforts throughout my career to promote education and improve services for those facing health challenges due to disparities in education, access to care, and other socioeconomic factors. I have over 35 years of applied health, minority health, and behavioral health research, evaluation, technical assistance, and training experience. I specialize in helping to facilitate health equity, reduce disparities, increase health promotion, and disease prevention. My broad background includes expertise in developing, implementing, evaluating, and guiding public health and behavioral health programs, policies, and related legislation with subject matter expertise in minority health, HIV, AIDS, substance abuse, cardiovascular disease, health disparities, healthcare reform, tribal issues, reentry, and criminal justice issues, interna international behavioral health, co-occurring mental health and trauma, and women and adolescent services. I serve on a number of boards where I'm able to utilize an expertise, my expertise and promote and facilitate equity in African Americans. Vice Chair of the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network Incorporated Board of Directors, Vice President of Administration and Board of Directors, member of the Black Women's Agenda Inc., Life Member of the National Council on Negro, of Negro Women Incorporated, <clears throat> Honorary Member of the Coalition of 100 Black Women, Member of the American Heart Association Diversity Leadership Committee, and also their Advocacy Coordinating Committee, member of the AIDS United Board of Trustees, secretary of the Board of Trustees for my alma mater, Fayetteville State University, life member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, life member of Jack and Jill of America Incorporated and immediate past president of the Lynx Incorporated. 
I'm a proud graduate of three historically black colleges and universities, earning a doctor of philosophy degree in personality psychology from Howard University, a master of science degree in psychology from North Carolina Central University, and a bachelor of science degree in psychology from Fayetteville State University. I completed a, a National Institutes of Minority Health pre-doctoral fellowship at George Washington University Medical School Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, examining chronic disease and family systems, a National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute postdoctoral fellowship at the Howard University Cancer Center, Division of Epidemiology and Biostatistics studying cardiovascular and cancer epidemiology, and the Graduate Summer Program in Epidemiology at Johns Hopkins University School of Hygiene and Public Health. I have been asked to speak to national audiences on issues of equities and equity and disparities, and have been the recipient of honors, awards, and recognition in this space. My background in public health and diversity and inclusion has well positioned me for this role as commissioner, if confirmed. The District of Columbia, while at one point majority African-American populated, now finds, it, now finds itself in the minority, albeit the largest minority in the district. Even with that, the district is a jurisdiction influenced by our African-American culture still a jurisdiction with a vital and vocal and impactful African-American community and still a jurisdiction where African-Americans face issues that overwhelmingly have impacted our health, wellness, and education. As a 34-year resident of the district, I have seen many things change, but I have seen many things stay the same. While many advances that benefit our African-American community have been made, policies, programs, and commissions, there is more that needs to be done. Nothing has shown the need of our community more than the COVID-19 pandemic pulling back the blanket that covered inequities and disparities that impacted basic day-to-day -day living. In this pandemic era, I immersed myself in those issues of vital importance to reducing the disparities emerging from COVID-19 and vulnerable communities, our African-American communities, including preventive behaviors and vaccine hesitancy. This is evidenced by my appointment by Mayor, Mayor Bowser to serve on the Reopen DC Advisory Group and the Reopen DC Task Force on Equity Disparity Reduction and Vulnerable Population Subcommittee to address the reopening of Washington, D.C. in a way that was safe and sustainable in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Commission on African Affairs, African American Affairs was established on March 14, 2012 to address those issues that we began to see due to gentrification in the district, specifically the low indicators of economics, health, and housing in our community. Our job as commissioners is to make recommendations on policies, programs, and other activities that ensure the vitality of African-American communities working to ensure that we thrive. We have had roundtables on COVID, driving home the need to get folks vaccinated and boosted. We have worked on home ownership, helping to build the Black middle class, including with the Strike Force program. We must continue to hold listening sessions to understand what our communities want and need. This is most important in decreasing the equity gap for our citizens. There is still more work to be done, and if confirmed, we must continue this work and continue to celebrate Washington's Black history and culture. I am excited about the opportunity to continue to serve on the Commission of African American Affairs if confirmed, and want to thank again Mayor Bowser for nominating me. The district is my home, where I raised my children as Black men, sending them to our public schools, where my husband put his life on the line <clears throat> as a DC firefighter for over 30 years until his retirement as a battalion fire chief. I am passionate about my community, the District of Columbia. I am passionate about this work. And I am passionate about continuing to move in a way that will be impactful to our African-American community here in the district, championing equity, inclusion in areas of health, education, and housing. Please allow me to take an opportunity to thank and acknowledge the commissioners who serve on the Commission on African American Affairs, Reverend, and the Director, Reverend Thomas Bone, Associate Director Caleb Kamara, and the staff who have worked so closely with us. As stated, this is a critical commission for the district, and I am proud to have worked alongside them. Chair White, thank you so much for the opportunity to testify today, and I look forward to answering any questions. Yes, thank you, absolutely. Um, are you a district resident? If confirmed, you plan on residing in the district during the duration of your appointment? Yes, I am, and yes, I do. Okay. Have you been or are currently a member of any district government board or commission? Commission on African American Affairs. Got it. Are you an attorney? I am not, no. Okay. Do you or any immediate family members have any interest, financial or otherwise, that may directly or indirectly pose a conflict of interest with the performance of your duties? No. Okay. Do you have any outstanding liabilities, taxes, fees, or other payments to the district, federal, state, or other local governments that are contested or uncontested? No. All right, thank you. Thank you. 
Philip Pineo. Yes, can you hear me? Yep, I hear you perfectly. Uh, you can you. go right ahead if you have an opening statement. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman White and members of the Committee on Recreation Library, Libraries and Youth Affairs. My name is Philip Pinnell, uh, and, and I want to thank uh, you for giving me the opportunity to testify this afternoon. I'm deeply honored and humbled by Mayor Bowser's uh, nomination of me for the Commission on African American Affairs. At the age of Mr. Pennell, um, I think you hit the mute button on your um, computer. I'm sorry. You're good. Okay, I'll start that paragraph over again. At the age of 72, I have witnessed uh, the struggles, the successes, and the continued challenges that we African Americans face. As a child growing up in rigidly racially segregated Newport News, Virginia, I was acutely aware of the second class status of African Americans. I vividly recall Seminole and Pivotal moments in the civil rights struggle, the picture of Emmett Till in Jet Magazine, the Birmingham church bombing, the 1963 March on Washington, and the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when I was a high school senior. Although I was fortunate to have an excellent high school education, I realized that I needed to learn more about my people. And after graduating, was blessed to be hired to work at the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, where, where I was on staff for three years. I moved to the District of Columbia in 1975 to work on the staff of the first Home Rule Council, and I have been actively involved in community affairs uh, for the past 48 years. I have always made a conscious decision to seek employment in areas that have a direct impact on African Americans, particularly those that need advocates to help with their challenges and struggles. Uh, I have served on the staffs of the Harvard University Center for Sickle Cell Disease, uh, the Marshall Heights Community Development Organization, and the liberation of ex-offenders through employment opportunities. I was the executive assistant to Peggy Cooper Kafers, president of the DC Board of Education, and was special assistant to Mayor Williams for LGBT affairs. For the past 27 years, I have been the executive director of the Anacostia Coordinating Council, ACC, a Ward 8 nonprofit organization. My, my commitment to improving outcomes for African Americans has also guided my volunteer endeavors. I have served as an advisory neighborhood commissioner, DC uh, NAACP board member, United Black Fund loaned executive, uh, DC Human Rights Commissioner, trustee of the DC Public Library, president of the Congress Heights Community Association, and vice president of the DC Federation of Civic Associations. If confirmed, I pledge to immerse myself in the work of the uh, commission to improve outcomes for African Americans in all areas of community life. Uh, what is of paramount importance is that Blacks not only be present and accounted for in all areas, but that we also be participatory and productive. In other words, Council Member White, to move in the spirit of your continued exhortations to do something. We new residents, uh, with new residents moving into the city and with seemingly inexorable gentrification, the work of the commission is pressing and salient. The displacement of blacks must be halted and the quality of our lives enhanced, particularly those living in the shadows of social, economic, and political life. Also, the legacy of African-American culture and history in DC must be preserved, cherished, and exalted. Uh, also, excuse me, unaware and insensitive newcomers can not only displace persons, but can also ignore or erase the identities of neighborhoods. There are those who can attest that in my community engagement, I have always emphasized the importance of African Americans as being critical to a sense of, of, of place of a neighborhood. As the ACC Executive Director, I was part of the, of the team that established the Anacostia Heritage Trail. Uh, 
During the past 40 years, I have served on several boards and commissions. My concern has always been that most boards and commissions do their work out of the public spotlight. If confirmed, I will advocate that the Commission on African American Affairs become more visible and vocal. I would also like the Commission to have meetings throughout the city. Uh, this would help to make a more synergistic approach uh, with his work by connecting with other uh, community organizations and activities. Councilmember White, please be assured that if confirmed, I will bring to the commission the same professionalism, resolve, energy, and commitment that I have brought to my paid employment. Thank you for this opportunity to testify and I welcome any questions you have. Thank you. All right. I, I... Are you, I know the answers, but I still have to ask these questions. <laughs> Are you a district resident? If confirmed, do you plan on residing in the district during the duration of your appointment? Yes. Uh, have you been or are you currently a member of any District of Columbia Board of Commissions, board or commission? Uh, I have served on the Commission of uh, Human Rights, the, Bo uh, the Library Board of Trustees, the Commission on Asian and Pacific Islander Affairs, and the Chesapeake Bay Program Local Government Advisory Committee. Got it. Thank you. Um, do you or any of your immediate family members have any interests, financial or otherwise, they may directly or indirectly pose a conflict of interest with the performance of your duties? No. Do you have any outstanding liabilities? taxes, fees, or other payments to the district, federal, state, or other local governments that are contested or uncontested? No. Um, if anything else you would like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. That concludes the questions right now. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Moving right along. Ms. Rashida Taylor. Hi, Council Member White. How you doing? <laughs> Hello, I'm Will. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You can start with your opening statement. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Chairman White and members of the Committee on Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs. Thank you, Chairman White, for holding this hearing and to Mayor Bowser for nominating me to the Commission on African American Affairs. My name is Rashida Taylor, and I was born and reared here in the district, a city I'm proud to call home. I think I'm qualified to serve on this board based upon my long and varied record of community service and activism. Since the age of 15, I have been advocating against gun violence. I joined forces with a nonprofit organization named Root, reaching out to others together, guns aside, where I worked my way up from the summer youth employment program to senior administrative assistant. I volunteer with many community organizations, including my church, dispersing food and clothes to those in need. I even helped put together events that will help bring peace in the streets. More recently, I have assisted with the FRESH program, fully restoring Every Son's Hope and the Great Injustice program, where I hope to have made a great impact helping those who were wrongfully convicted to seek and find justice. I have also given my time as a parent leader with Spaces in Action to fight for things such as early childhood learning, health equity, and economic justice. I worked for two years as a parent advocate, peer facilitator for a local CBO alongside Georgetown University Hospital Professionals trying to develop better mental health safe spaces for families. In January of 2021, my mom and I started a nonprofit organization called It Takes a Village, also known as ITAB DC with the mission set out to help DC families with parenting, stability, and financial literacy. This year, I was certified in infant and child mental health from Georgetown University of Professional Studies. I'm also certified in Strengthening Family Coping Resources, SFCR, from the University of Maryland. I wear many hats, mom, daughter, sister, entrepreneur, and community activist. While it may seem like a lot, I feel like I was born to do it all. Currently, I'm a student at Trinity Washington University. I want to volunteer my time to this board because I am passionate about helping African-Americans rise and thrive. I believe it truly takes a village and this board will just be an extension of I mean what I say. 
I will, I will move this board forward with my experience with working with families and working with organizations to spearhead ideas to get it done. I have spearheaded meetings to bring organizations together to partner with programs I was a part of as a parent advocate. Spearheading meetings was not my job, but it was something I was gifted in because of the rapport I would build with people. I think that my personal and professional background has positioned me to serve ably on the African American Affairs Commission. I know what it feels like to be a native Washingtonian looking for affordable housing when you know you do not make enough to live here. I have experienced a lot living here that I connect with many people and that's what brings us together. I believe I merit your confirmation of my nomination because I am passionate about the mission on the affairs of the African American people. And I want to do whatever it takes to continue to move us forward. I have ideas I would like to discuss with the director and the board members, especially as it relates to connecting our African American communities to additional channels to reach every sector of our community in order to expand resources relating to entrepreneurship, financial literacy, and community, community development so that we can all rise and thrive. I believe this commission is doing a great job, but of course there's always room to improve as every day something changes to make life just a little harder. Thank you to Mayor Bowser for nominating me and to Chairman White for holding the hearing on my confirmation today. I welcome any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, let's jump right in. As a, are you a district resident if confirmed? Do you plan on residing in the district during the duration of your appointment? Yes, I am. And yes, I do. Okay. Have you been or are you currently a member of any district government board or commission? No, I'm not. Okay. Are you an attorney? No. Okay. Do you or any of your immediate family members have any interest, financial or otherwise, that may direct or indirectly pose a conflict of interest with the performance of your duties? No. Okay. Do you have any outstanding liabilities, taxes, fees, or other payments to the district, federal, state, or other local governments that are contested or uncontested? No. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing today, Ms. Taylor. Thank you, Councilmember. All right. We're going to turn to last but not least, Ms. Yolanda Young. You can start with your testimony once you jump on. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Yolanda Young, and I would like to thank the Honorable Mayor Muriel Bowser for the nomination to the Commission on African American Affairs. I also thank Committee on Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs Chairperson, Ward 8 Council Member, uh, Trayon White Sr., and Council Members Brianne Nadeau, Kenyon Duff McDuffie, uh, Janice Lewis George, and at large Council Member Anita Bonds for your confirmation hearing. I am the Executive Director of 501c3 Nonprofit Lawyers of Color which is devoted to promoting diversity in the legal profession and advancing democracy and equality in marginalized communities. We celebrate attorneys of color and conduct research and studies regarding the intersection of the legal profession and social justice. I am also a journalist whose work appears in the Washington Post, USA Today, The Guardian, and on NPR. I am also an entrepreneur and the owner of Dorpy Books Publishing Company. I have been a resident of the District of Columbia for over 30 years and recently published a home in Ward 7. I'm a graduate of Howard University and the Georgetown University Law Center. My previous employers include the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, former Senator Weish Fowler, Covington and Burling LLP, and the National Football League Players Association. From 2006 through 2012, I served as a board member for the Penn Faulkner Foundation, which is located in Washington, DC. I was also a member of the Metropolitan Baptist Church until it relocated to Maryland in 2009. Over a decade ago, Random House published my memoir, On Our Way to Beautiful. Since its publication, I have annually visited DC high schools through Penn Faulkner's Writers in Schools program. Previously, I received an emerging, 
Emerging Writer Award from the District of Columbia's Commission on Arts and Humanities. I have also been nominated for the I have also been honored by the National Bar Association and the Black Pre-Law Conference. I would like to volunteer my time to serve on the Commission on African American Affairs because the city has done so much to enrich my life personally and that of so many people in my life. I welcome the opportunity to give back to this great city. I'm especially invested in ensuring that the African Americans in the city continue to have support even as their percentages shrink. As a longtime resident of Washington, D.C., I have an appreciation for the concerns and needs of, African, of the African-American community. Additionally, my professional background as an attorney and businesswoman, as well as my involvement in the community, give me insight into the community's needs. I'm able to advise the district government on policies and programs impacting African-American communities and clearly communicate to residents what district resources and economic opportunities are available to them. Thank you for your consideration. I welcome any questions you may have. Thank you. Um, are you a district resident? Um, and if confirmed, do you plan on residing in the district during the duration of your appointment? I am and I do. Okay. Have you been or currently uh, are you a member of any district government board or commission? I am not. Okay. Are you an attorney? Now, there we go. I am. There we go. All right. Um, and uh, now, are you uh, a member of the state board and are you in good standing? I am a member of the DC bar and I am in good standing. Great. Thank you. Thank you. First one for today. Do you or any of your immediate family members have any interest, financial or otherwise, they may directly or indirectly pose a conflict of interest with the performance of your duties? No. Okay. Do you have any outstanding liabilities, taxes, fees, or other payments to the district, federal, state, or other local governments that are contested or uncontested? No. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys uh, for joining us today. We have a, uh, uh, some great candidates for these boards of commissions. I know you all would do well if confirmed. Uh, we will be sending this to our colleagues to uh, confirm you. A final note for this round table, if anyone could not testify, would like to submit a written testimony to be included in the official record, you can email your testimony to the Committee on Recreation, Libraries and Youth Affairs um, RYA at dccouncil.gov. Uh, the official record will close tomorrow, uh, Friday, October the 28th, 2022, at 5 30 p.m. And if you have an opening statement, we're asking that you email that to our office, please. We don't have everyone's um, written testimony. We need that. Uh, the time is now 12. Oh, sorry. The time is now 1 18 p.m. Um, and this roundtable is adjourned. Thank you to all the witnesses who testified and all the nominees. You all have a blessed and productive day.